Hey, good day, Intentionites. This is Rocky Ventura with Intentionate.com here to bring you another episode today on our continued learning of Master Resiliency training, uh, training that was created by the University of Pennsylvania in conjunction with the Army, uh, intent to increase resiliency uh, in individuals. Of course, we know that uh, studies have shown that when you are resilient to things, you're able to be a more effective member of your team, right? You can take constructive criticism, you can think positively, thinking positively leads to more creative thinking, more creative thinking leads to uh, more things happening in your organization and elsewhere, right? So a lot of stuff happens when you're a resilient individual. Uh, think about how resiliency can affect even you at home. Uh, if you're a parent, how does it affect your parenting skills, right? When you, we know your moody teen is going to be moody and they say things to you, um, your resiliency can play a role in whether or not that's going to improve or uh, worsen your relationship with your teen or your spouse or a friend or that person at work or something, your neighbor, right? So definitely resiliency has a lot to bring to the table. Uh, those who have been following the videos, we are continuing on. Uh, with another skill today. We've identified that resiliency has six competencies and several skills, okay? And those uh, skills are, each skill builds on those competencies that we learned, the six competencies. And uh, we believe that resiliency is something that can be trained and taught. It's a skill that you can develop. And the more you develop it, the better you are to be resilient. Uh, just a reminder, those competencies are self-awareness, right, uh, self-regulation, optimism, mental agility, strengths of character, and connection, the way you connect with others. So those are the six competencies, and we're going to be learning skills that draw from those competencies to make you more resilient. And today, I got to tell you, it's my favorite one. Uh, they call this one the, uh, the uh, ATC, all right? Let me not define it yet. We're gonna open up the PowerPoint here and get started. I gotta warn you, this is a little longer lesson and I debated whether I should break this up in half or not. Um, so if you get to a point where you need to stop, then pause it and then, and then stop. But I think for the flow of things, cause I couldn't identify like where's a good point to stop at because I wanna include the practical exercises. If you were to take this thing with me during the courses, you know, we would do the teaching and then we go on a break and then you'd come back and we do the practical exercise together. And all in total would be like two hours, two and a half hours, something like that. We're not gonna go that long today, but it's gonna be a long one. So be prepared, uh, figure out where's a good stopping point for you. And then uh, if you need to continue, continue. Don't forget to have your workbook. If you want a workbook, uh, I can email you a PDF copy of the workbook we've been using, rockyventura at gmail.com. Send me an email and say you'd like the book, rockyventura at gmail.com, and I can send you the workbook you can print out and use the practical exercises to help you with this lesson. So let's get started. All right, my favorite lesson, and uh, yeah, I'm excited to, to do this one with you. All right, pulling this up here. <clears throat> Blow up the screen. Turn off the subtitles. All right, so when you look at the ATC, I'm gonna tell you what ATC means, but what are we looking at right here? We're, we're looking at a thought cloud, right? And in a thought cloud, what goes into a thought cloud? You've seen those cartoons, right? When someone's just thinking and then a little thought comes out, what goes in there? Yep, you said it, your thoughts, okay? Your thoughts, and so that's what we're going to be studying today uh, is we're gonna be learning about your thoughts and, uh, and how you interact and how you're, um, well, let me not go too far. Here we go. So just a reminder, these are skills. And now this is the third skill that we're learning in this MRT program, uh, ATC. So the first one was goal setting, right? How to set goals and how important that is. The next one was hunt the good stuff. Okay, hunt the good stuff. And then the uh, one we're on now is um, ATC. All right. So let's go ahead and get started. Well, ATC helps you to build awareness. So when we're learning the competencies, remember we talked there's six competencies, awareness, regulation, optimism, mental agility, strengths of character, and connection. This one's going to really focus on uh, the competency of self-awareness. And we have said in other, in the intro lessons to these courses, 
the more you're self-aware, the more able um, you're, you can react or respond in a certain way that hopefully is uh, productive for you, okay? And so the goal is to become more self-aware and that's what ATC does. In specifically speaking, ATC is gonna help you identify those, those heat of the moment thoughts that you think of uh, whenever an activating event occurs. Uh, I'll explain a little bit more what an activating event is. But so what do you think of when something happens to you, activating event, and then the consequences uh, that occur because you thought that thought? That's what this lesson is about today. And that's why they call this the mother of all skills to learn, because your thoughts produce a consequence, all right? The, but just because of the way you think, it's going to cause you to act or, or, or feel a certain way about it. And that's going to cause a consequence, whether it's going to favor you or not favor you, but the way you think, and we call those your emotions and your reactions, those two right there, the E and the C, or the E and the R equals C, emotions and reactions is your the consequence, a consequence produces from your emotions and your reactions, all right? Um, if you have the notes, if you have a paper, you know, the key takeaway word here is going to be identify. That's what you self-aware, right? It makes you more self-aware. You identify. So I want you to underline the word identify. But then I also want you to underline this part here. So you can have, all right? When you identify, then you can have greater control of those emotions and reactions that are creating the consequences uh, that you are going through, okay? More to explain here shortly. Let's get on with the training here. So here's a basic model created by Dr. Uh, Albert Ellis. Uh, let me look at my notes here. Um, so here, here's a basic model created by Dr. Ellis and we're gonna go through this model, it builds, okay? So the idea of ATC is that there's some kind of activating event occurring on in your life. Okay, uh, perhaps it's a positive event or it's a negative event, some kind of a challenge you might be going through, some kind of adversity. It doesn't always have to be negative. It could be positive, which we still want you to focus on the positive things. Okay, but a lot of bad things happen to us too. And we also want you to, to be aware like what's going on in your mind? What are you going through when these bad, so-called bad things are, are occurring in your life, okay? And we call these, uh, it's some kind of a trigger, some, something that, that makes you like, whoa, right? Um, so this is the activating event. For me today, it could be I was driving on the highway and some, someone cut me off, okay? And at that point that someone cut me off, bam, that was the activating event. Someone cut me off. At that point, I have now an opportunity to decide the thoughts. Uh, well, let me scoot back. It's not the opportunity. It's I, I, a thought comes into my mind automatically, right? Um, if I don't give it any thought, it's going to pop up by itself, okay? This thought is my interpretation of that event. So someone cuts me off. What is it that I'm thinking of? Uh, what do I say to myself, bam, at the, in, in the heat of the moment, right? When we say heat of the moment, it's like you haven't really had time to think about it. It's just what is happening immediately in the heat of the moment by default? Like, who are you inside that? What is your inside bringing out by default? Someone cuts you off on the road. You're driving. You're driving the speed limit. You haven't done nothing wrong. And someone cuts you off. All right, what is your heat of the moment thought? Uh, and I can share mine with you, right? So I'm driving on the road, someone cuts me off. Like I, one, I'm, I fear for my life. And then I, when my thoughts get back together, I, I'm angry. So I'm angry, I fear for my life. These are some heat of the moment thoughts that are popping up. And I'm saying, you jerk, you a-ho, and learn how to drive. And, and maybe I'm honking the horn as well, right? So those are the thoughts. And here is what I just referred to as the consequence. Well, what am I doing, right? I'm emitting, a, emitting an emotion or, and or a reaction, right? Um, some kind of emotion or some sort of reaction. And that thing is creating a consequence 
Okay, just because of the way I thought about how that car cut me off, because of the way I thought about how that car cut me off, it created an emotion inside of me. It created an and it created an action inside of me. So maybe I stuck the finger at them, right? Maybe I cursed him out and I was angry. There's the emotion, the finger is the reaction because of the way I thought about it. And I've said this in another lesson before. What if I had thought, um, oh no, I, I hope they're okay. They cut me off. But I, what if I had said, man, I hope they're okay. I hope they get to their destination on time. They sure are speeding fast. How would my emotion be? You know, maybe I'd be feel sympathetic, right? And, uh, and hope that they get there. And then the reaction could be that I pray for them and hope they get there safely because they're driving a little fast. You see the same activating event. This time I controlled the thought and I was able to produce a consequence that naturally fell in line with that, that theme, right? That, that kind of thinking. And so... Uh, so the bottom line that uh, the big takeaway here is that thoughts drive our consequences. All right. Thoughts drive our consequences. Um, and so let's take a look at this uh, chart here and let's see if we can do a little rehearsal practice to see how this works. So you get into a fight with someone you care about. Here's the activating event. You get into a fight with your spouse, your friend. Uh, your neighbor, you know, somebody that you care about. And the, the heat of the moment thought that comes to your mind is, she never listens to what I have to say. That's the heat of the moment thought. She never listens or he never listens to what I have to say. Okay, at this time, I want you to take the opportunity to think about what are some emotions that might come into you in and uh, that might come to your mind from this scenario, because I'm maybe I've got to assume you've been in a fight with somebody before and you were trying to get your point across and you felt that they just don't listen. Right. So in this case, that person never listens to what I have to say. They were trying to cut you off and all this stuff. Right. So what's an emotion that you might feel? You're a little frustrated. Right. A little angry. Uh, trespass, like, oh, you're, you're invading on my opportunity to say what I need to say. Um, so those are some things, right? And then uh, in this case, yeah, frustrated, irritated, angry. Now I want you to take the time to come up with some possible reactions because you feel that way. You've already, the thought is she never listens to what I have to say. She never listens to what I have to say. Because you feel that way, frustrated, irritated, and angry, what are some reactions that might naturally come up because you're, you're feeling that way? All right, I want you to take a stab at that. What are some reactions? Hmm? Okay, and pause the video if you need to. Uh, just give it some thought, though, all right? What are some reactions that you have done when you got into a fight with someone and then you believe that you believe that they never listen to what you have to say because you believe that that was your thought and then you you got frustrated and irritated and angry with it right what are some of the reactions you're likely to do if this was me hey i'd probably um say what's the point right like what this happens all the time what's the point and i'm probably gonna ignore that person i'm probably gonna raise my voice my heart rate will probably get elevated um, you know, I'm, I'm going to be angry. And so, you know, I, I just don't want to talk to them or I could just be yelling at them back. Right. <laughs> and so these are some natural reactions and uh, maybe you came up with your own, but they're probably not too far from this idea of how you would react. Okay. So I want you to go to your participant guide and I'm looking at mine here. Uh, and I want you to go to page 34 and 35 of this workbook. Now, it's important that you do these exercises because later on in this training, you're going to be referring back to these uh, events because these skills build off one another. And later on in the future, I'll say, hey, go back to page 34, 35, and let's see what you wrote. Okay, so let's look at page 34 here. Uh, these are some activating events. They're just a list of activating events that go on. Um, that could happen to common people. And I'm reading some here, excuse me, as I turn away from the camera, I'm just 
uh, taking the opportunity to read some of these here. Let's see here. So we have balancing and person. How well do you balance personal and professional responsibilities, uh, conflicts with friends? And so you can see on a scale of one through 10, you're either very effective, 10, or not at all effective, okay? And so I'm going to read some of these to you. And in case uh, you don't have the workbook, but you just want to contemplate in your mind, that's fine too, okay? Or you can always just write these down. So, so how uh, being a part of a team, that's a, you're told you have to be a part of a team. Uh, you know, what's your act? That's the activating event. You have a conflict with a friend. You have a conflict with family members. How well do you respond? All right. We all respond differently to different situations, right? Um, and not everyone handles these events exactly the same way you do. Um, and so leadership responsibilities, when you're told, hey, you, you, you're you going to have this responsibility, how well do you do that? Physical discomforts, right? When you're told, uh, hey, when you're uncomfortable, you ever, uh, I don't know, um, I've lived in an apartment before, and I remember they turned off the water for a certain amount of time, and it was uncomfortable. I remember they told me, uh, it was right after I had just worked out too going to go home, shower, this and that. And then they turned off the water because some emergency happened. And it was just uncomfortable, right? So how well did I handle that? Could I have said, oh, wow, look at them. They're, they're, they're fixing an issue, right? And that could have been the thought I put in my head. But instead, because I was thinking about me, right? I'm like, oh, how dare they? They didn't give us warning. <laughs> okay, so uh, how well do you handle moving? <clears throat> Maybe you have to move to a new job or move to a new location. How well do you handle hectic schedules? Activating event, hectic schedule. It's a crazy schedule. How do you handle that? Your interactions with peers, uh, subordinates. Um, how well do you handle financial situations, right? How well do you handle spiritual concerns? How well do you handle time alone? So these are just a bunch of different scenarios. If you were to read on page 34, um, there's a list uh, of all these. It looks like there's about 20 maybe. Um, and then it has a, a scale of one through 10. Again, 10 is you handled it very well. You're very effective when these things occur or not at all effective, which is a one. And then you just go ahead and circle where you are in between. Uh, this is going to give you an idea of where you stand with some of these. Maybe you've never really thought about it before, right? Maybe you've never given yourself the opportunity to think about that. All right, let's talk about uh, uh, 35. Now we're going to get a little bit more deeper. So on page 35, it has instructions. It says, use the space below to generate recent, meaningful, and specific examples of situations you did not handle as effectively as you needed to. All right, so you can draw from your list that you just created on page 34, or you can just think of some new ones, okay? Um, here... Uh, for example, mine, I put uh, getting, getting chewed out. I got chewed out one time for being late to work. It embarrassed me and it hurt my pride. I didn't like the tone or approach. All right, so there's an example of an activating event. I got chewed out. All right, uh, another activating event, uh, physical discomfort. Here's what I wrote for my example here. My spouse rearranged a room to clean and give it a fresh feel, but I didn't react well to it, to the idea that I now had to spend energy to relearn where things were moved. You ever do that? Or your spouse uh, moves things around and now you may be in a rush or you just like, where are my things? I had my things here. <laughs> okay. So, you know, I, it was an activating event. Spouse moved things around. My thought is, oh my goodness, why are you moving stuff around? Where's my stuff? And then my emotion, I got angry, I got frustrated in my reaction, I'm yelling at my spouse. Okay, so these are some activating events that didn't play well for me, right? Uh, let me give you one more, just for an example. I wrote, letting down people on my team, that was the activating event. Um, I failed to give specific guidance to my team concerning a meeting. As a result, we failed to start on time, which impacted today's agenda. I remember this one. I remember we got in trouble. My, my boss got angry. My boss's schedule was late. I was late. I felt the pressure of like, oh no, we're behind. We couldn't get the PowerPoint to work. Our computer, like it was one of those stormy days, right? But that was the activating event was, uh, um, I, well, the activating event was um, 
we, we didn't start the meeting on time. And then all these other thoughts happen. So, okay, I'm putting this book to the side. Now you got an idea and I want you to pause the video and I want you to seriously do page 34 and page 35. Uh, again, if you don't have your workbook or this uh, practical exercise, then just do it on a piece of paper. Think of like 10 activating events in your life, okay? 10 activating events or five or whatever, but you know, get a good amount and say, uh, got cut off on the road, um, got fired. Uh, my daughter told me um, she got an A in class. How did you handle that? You know, um, so all these things, uh, just think of some scenarios, you, the thought, the heat of the moment thought you thought about that activating event. Um, and then write down how you responded, your emotional uh, and let's see, okay. There's also a bottom part there. Uh, it says for homework, use the space below to generate recent meaningful example every time when your emotions and reactions were out of proportion to your heat of the moment thought. Okay. Um, so here it is. Uh, here's an example of one that I put. We once bought a dog and we were all excited. Dog was small chihuahua puppy. One day during a PCS, a PCS is where army soldier moves to a new location. One day during a PCS, my kids suggested that the puppy travel with me in my car, which was a two seater truck. So we were in two different cars. I was by myself and my kids were with my wife. And so the puppy drove with me because they didn't want the puppy to be alone. Um, about an hour into the drive, the dog was crying. So in an effort to, uh, Uh, in an effort, oh, I'm sorry, I cannot read my writing. In an effort to bond with the puppy, okay, I decided to take her out. I was happy to have her with me. She seemed happy too. However, things went down more fast when she, when I, when I oh, opened her, oh, opened her little thing up just to pet her real quick. She got so excited she peed all over me, right? Um, and I was so mad, and I, I pushed her off me. I started yelling and screaming and got all mad. And then I, uh, uh, we, we went to the next pit stop at the gas station and I, I gave the dog back to the kids. I was so angry that I was filled with pee and everything. I mean, I extremely overreacted. I was using curse words and I said, I see we shouldn't have got this stupid dog and blah, 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 right? I mean, uh, yeah, okay, I read everything that I needed to hear. So. I overreacted. To say I overreacted is probably an understatement. Okay, so was there a time in your life that uh, you know there was an activating event, but man, you just blew up. I mean, you took it way out of proportion. So that's the second half of page um, thirty-five. Okay, that's the second half of page thirty-five. Is you're going to give a, a real, just one detailed example of a time that it just did not, your emotions and your uh, your your um, reactions were just not in proportion to the activating event. Like, okay, I get that you're mad, but that's a little overkill, right? To curse your kids out, to to shove the puppy back into the, uh, to, to the family. And it was just overkill. The whole day was ruined and everything. So go ahead and think about those things and we'll move on to the next exercise. Don't forget to pause the video if you need to, okay? All right, so which situations do you already handle well? So this is a reflection back on the exercise that we just finished doing. Uh, I asked you to pause the video and then, uh, you know, now we're gonna talk about it. So which situations do you, hand, do you already handle well? On page 34, you got to list out all the things that you think you do well, right? Like, oh, I, I, I do well with, uh, with, with change. I do well with uh, tight schedules. Uh, I do well with last minute things. Um, and which situations do you need to handle more effectively? Uh, for me, um, there was a, a line that says getting chewed out. I don't like to get chewed out. So I need to handle that stuff a little better, right? I don't think anyone likes their pride to be like beat up, right? So uh, I know when I'm receiving criticism or, or someone's responding to me in a harsh negative way, I tend to tense up. Um, and so I gave myself a four there. I don't handle my, that very well. Uh, another area uh, I gave myself a four is in physical discomforts. And another area was letting people down on my team. Now you'll notice that those ones that I used on page 34, 
were the same ones I used on page 35. So um, I just transferred those over and then I wrote a little bit more about those. So that's how you can do this exercise, page 34 and 35. Um, just talk about those. And it's really just to get you to start thinking, how do you typically respond to problems? And where are the areas that, 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 that are harder for you? Okay, just be aware of them. Don't, don't judge yourself. Don't uh, think negatively of it. Just be aware, know that they're there um, and we'll move on. So let's talk a little bit about emotions here. And basically we're gonna define emotions here and the, the University of Pennsylvania defines it as a feelings and, are usually, and, and those feelings are accompanied by a physiological and or behavioral changes in the body. I've heard another person put it another way. Uh, emotions are energy in motion, all right? So the energy is the feeling you get, all right? Uh, you know, you're mad, you're angry, you're depressed, you're scared. And those feelings create something inside of you that causes you to either, you're, you're physiologically, right? If you're scared, isn't your heart rate going to beat a little faster? you're angry, isn't your blood going to flow a little faster, right? You turn red, maybe there's some physiological things. And then also behavior changes in the body, right? Your face might get like this, or if you're happy, your face might get like this. Uh, you might be like, I told you, right? Or, oh, give me a hug, right? So you got behavioral changes, you got physiological changes, um, and so these examples that include anger, happiness, fear, love, all of these things incite some of that. And so that feeling that you have is going to be accompanied with physiological or behavior pattern. And that's how the University of Pennsylvania here in this uh, MRT program defines an emotion. Okay, it's just a, a feeling that's accompanied by a behavior or some physiological uh, pattern there. Okay. Identifying emotions. Uh, so this, if we were in a class, this is uh, something that uh, we would do, but just for your own edification training purposes here, what I want you to do is grab a pen and paper and put a line in the middle of that paper, right? And on the left side, I want you to write out positive emotions. And then on the right side, I want you to write out negative emotions and, and give yourself like uh, three minutes, okay? and write out as many as you can, okay? Write out as many as you can, all the positive emotions that you can write out, and then write out all the negative emotions, and then uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, or we'll, we'll take a look at that afterward, okay? Um, just a reminder as you're doing this exercise uh, uh, that there might be different intensities to represent the same emotion, and that's okay, okay? so. Uh, angry, angrier, or right, uh, angriest, or you know, whatever comes to your mind, right? Like uh, uh, enraged, it, it might be angry, but a different intensity turns it into enraged, right? So it's okay, just as many words that come to your mind, whether it's positive or negative, write them down and give yourself um, some time to do that. Time yourself, okay? Uh, three minutes to work on both sides simultaneously. All right, go. Okay, so I'm assuming that you did that. You should have paused the video to do that, but if you didn't, we'll go ahead and move to the next assignment, our next uh, slide. So now we're gonna identify your emotions. What did you learn about that exercise? Huh? Which, uh, which list was bigger? Was it positive emotions, negative emotions? Which, uh, and which was easier to come up with, right? And this might be a little telltale sign. It might be, I'm not saying it is, but it could be a little telltale sign of, of what you tend to default to, which uh, emotions are more prevalent inside of you. And again, don't judge yourself, just, just understand, like be, be amazed by that idea. Like, wow, I didn't know that I think of all these negative words. I have more vocabulary of negative words than I do positive words. And what would that mean to you if that was true, right? All right, uh, so why is it important to have a variety of words versus uh, uh, 
words for different emotions. What do you think? Remember I told you um, that the different intensities were okay. So for example, if you listed rage versus anger versus annoyance, um, those different intensities are okay, right? But why is that important that you have a variety of words uh, to represent your different emotions? What do you think? I'm sure, uh, you know, you can agree that uh, that they, uh, they mean something, right? Words have meaning. And so choosing the right word is extremely important um, than just saying, uh, you know, I'm very angry or, you know, I'm disappointed, I'm upset, or right? you, choosing the right word matters. Um, and so that's another thing that we have to identify when we're identifying what emotions are and what they mean to us. Um, okay. Uh, so ATC helps us to separate those thoughts from our emotions. Okay, when we're using the skill of ATC, all right, you're going to learn how to separate your thoughts from that emotion that you're feeling. And that's really the point of these exercises, the point of this training is to learn to separate the thoughts uh, from your emotion. All right, now before we get uh, further into it, we close out the learning topic of emotions and get to a bigger picture of things. Um, just a quick remember uh, what, it, uh, what a positive emotion is, okay? And this is going off the work of uh, Barbara, Fre Barbara Fredrickson, who did a study, a long-term study on uh, positive emotions. And here's what uh, Ms. Fredrickson uh, said. When you are a positive thinker, right? When you, when you have positive emotions, like you're happy, you're joyful, um, you tend to be more creative, all right? It increases your creative thinking. Um, you ever had to accomplish something and you just go in it with a negative mindset, like, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this, right? But if you say, I'm going to do this, let's say working out, for example, you might say, I don't want to do this and you might still do it, but it's going to be the bare minimum, amazing. But when you change your mindset and say, I get to do this, I have an opportunity to do this, uh, you might still not necessarily want to 100% do it, but you're thinking positively about the outcome. So it, it, it makes things a little bit better. So the, those undue physiological effects that negative emotions tend to bring are, are going to be canceled out by the fact that you're thinking positively. And that's kind of one of the end states of having a positive emotional uh, mindset is, um, is to do that, right? You want to be resilient. And so thinking positively helps you to do that versus thinking negatively. Um, positive emotions are contagious as well, right? When someone walks in the room and they're happy, um, you know, it, it's not hard to just be angry at a person who's happy, right? They're just like, as I know sometimes when my kids tend to do something and they just like a uh, real positive. And I remember my kids are little and they drop something and they're all happy, like, look, daddy. And, and uh, I remember, oh, what was it? Oh, they were painting something. I remember this. Uh, and they were painting and they had to paint all over. But God, the creativity and the positivity that was radiating off of that little kid is just like, ah, you couldn't be mad, right? So this is a, a positive emotion can help you overcome that. It's very contagious. And it also helps uh, to build uh, resilience. Uh, is there value? So this then provokes a question here. Is there value to... Uh, is there a value to negative emotion? Yeah, right. Um, so I don't want you to think that having positive is the only way to go. There is some value to having negative emotion, right? For instance, um, is it okay to think like you're going to get eaten by a lion if you see a lion? Yeah, right. It's not thinking. I mean, it, it might be negative thinking, but that negative thinking might protect you. Is it okay to think negative if you're walking into a party or something and you just see all these drunken people and, and they're fighting and they're acting a fool? Is it a good time to be negative there and say, I don't think we should go in there. I'm not feeling it. And it's a negative emotion. Yeah, right. So in the sense of when you're sensing danger, uh, even thinking negative, like, um, man, I'm not doing good in my job. I need to pick up the pace. That might be a negative thought. But by you expressing that negative thought, um, it helps, it provokes you to change, 
right? And so I don't want to only say positive emotions are the only thing to rely on because they're not. Some of the negative is there for a reason and it helps counteract that, uh, you know, the uh, uh, ignorance that you may have. You're ignoring. Ignorance means ignore and, and ignoring uh, something else. So yeah, listen to those dangers, listen to those opportunities that provoke you to change inside through the use of some of those natural things. But what, what I'm referring to here is don't think negatively for the sake of thinking negative, right? If it's gonna come up naturally, it's because that's your intuition speaking, right? You feel you're gonna be in danger. There's something inside that says this is not right or there's something inside that says enough is enough. I need to lose weight. I need to cancel my debt. I need to do all these things. So there are some, your intuition is talking to you, okay? And, I, and I'm not saying that to, to ignore that, but for anything else, when we're talking about positive emotions, it's like, in spite of these things, I choose to take a proactive stance. I'm gonna be positive about it. I'm, I'm gonna only look to things that, that I can change and affect, okay? Uh, also, uh, emotions such as gratitude and humor are said said to, uh, but the research shows that when you have gratitude or when you have humor, it can stabilize you again. To so say you're really angry and say, uh, um, oh my gosh, uh, the stock market just went down and I lost uh, you know, $10,000 or whatever, and you're angry, but humility or, or gratitude can say, you know what, I have, um, at least I have, the opportunity to invest in the stock market. At least I live in a country that allows me to invest in the stock market. Now, all of a sudden, what was angry, now it levels out. And so gratitude can do that. The other stabilizer that the research shows is um, humor. And humor, uh, laughing returns your heart rate to, base, to, uh, to a baseline that, uh, or it'll return your heart rate to a baseline when it was already beating really, really fast. So humor is another way to counteract these things. So that, and this is based on science, okay? So if you're ever angry, do something funny, like uh, do this or, you know, do that, look yourself in the mirror or do it to your kids with you. And it was, it said that if you want to counteract the anger, the negativity that's going on inside, you can simply do something funny, watch something funny, play with your kids, um, something humorous, think of a funny thought like, oh my God, I bet you I look so stupid yelling at this car or yelling at this person. Or, you know, think of it in a playful manner and you can reset or counteract that negativism that's going on. So remember, gratitude and humor are some of the fastest ways to rebalance your emotional state if you feel like, oh, it's getting out of control because something happened, right? Um, Okay, so that, that was an interesting study by Barb Fredersen that I thought uh, was pretty cool. It's a really cool skill to have. Don't forget, you can balance it out, okay? All right, what I want you to do is get your participant guide and go to page, let me go to mine here. Uh, go to page 37 in your participant guide because for... Uh, for the next, uh, the, for the remaining of time here, we're, we're going to be kind of really studying this idea of thought themes, thoughts and thought themes and emotions and reactions. And we're going to put the science into this now, okay? And so I want you to, if you have the participant guide, you're going to be handwriting this into there, okay, these thought themes. And we're going to go by one at a time and we're going to go through these thought themes together. So let's talk about um, what a thought theme is versus a thought. So a thought is a, uh, 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 let me read my, thoughts are what you say to yourself in the heat of the moment, right? You thought of something. But the thought themes are more general categories that summarize the meaning or the category of that specific thought. Okay, so these thought themes like, ah, uh, this car cut me off. And so my first thought was, you a-hole, okay? Why am I saying that? You a-hole, why am I so angry? Because chances are, maybe I felt my life was in danger, right? And so a thought theme could be danger. And that danger causes me to feel, if you look on the right side of it, 
anxiety or agitation. And guess what? I don't like it when I feel that way. It feels ugly, it feels scary. Who likes to feel anxious? Who likes to feel agitated, right? And so um, that's what danger you know, leads to. Okay, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go through the definitions of each of these thought themes. And to the right of that definition, you can see the emotion and then the forward slash, the reaction. Okay, and that's how you use this chart. So let's look at the first one here and don't forget to write these down. Or if you want, at the end, you can just take a snap picture of it. Um, uh, however you want, it's up to you, okay? Uh, for those who don't have the um, page 37 participant guide. All right, so loss. Here's a thought theme. You feel like you're losing something. I have lost something that I value or that I care about. Okay, so go ahead and circle the word value and care when you write this out. All right, this, this, this will tend to give you a emotion of sadness, right? When you lose something, this is a, a person, a thing. Maybe you, uh, I remember when my wife lost her wedding ring, she was super sad. I, I lost my wedding ring, uh, ring, ring two times, and this is my third one. Uh, so anyway, I, I know how that makes you feel, right? Uh, it, you, when you lose something, you, you do feel sad for a little bit, and it's just like, oh, man. And you're just missing out on something. When, when a person passes away, uh, doesn't it make you feel sad? You value that person, you care about that person, or, or a thing is you value it too, right? Um, and then uh, your reaction is that you just tend to withdraw. Like you're just like, nah, don't talk to me, or leave me alone, or you're sad, uh, right? When you get into a state of depression because of a loss, right? Uh, you tend to withdraw from the world. And in some cases, uh, some people physically withdraw, right? They take their life. Um, and so this is a, a thought theme, okay? When you have loss uh, or the thought theme of loss tends to invoke emotions of sadness and reaction into your life. Um, okay. What about the thought theme of danger? Write this down. Something bad might happen or there is a threat. So you're feeling this thought theme that, uh, okay, I just know that something's gonna happen. So you, 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 you uh, maybe on a you're afraid of planes, right? And you don't want to get on that plane because something bad might happen. There's a threat there to you, or someone. I just use this one, right? Someone cuts you off on the road. There's a threat there. Something bad might happen. Like, oh my god, I almost lost my life. So there's a sense of danger uh, to this thought theme that, uh, um, oh, there is danger in this thought theme, right? That, that something is going to happen to you personally. There's some kind of threat, right? Someone curses you out. You're being threatened. Um, and it's like, whoa, are they going to fight with me? You're going to fight, bro. What's up? <laughs> so it, what does it do? The emotion, you start to get anxious, don't you? You get anxious. Um, and so when I think, when you think of these emotions, I want you to think of a wheel, that word anxiety, the anxiousness is just a centerpiece of what you could be feeling, but it's really all the shades uh, of anxiety, right? Uh, so anything closely related to anxiety is how you're going to feel. And then your reaction may be agitation. So you're going to feel like ah, ah, you're agitated. So what's another word for agitated? You're, you're, um, uh, it, it can be degrees of agitation, right? You can feel like uh, angry or upset, uh, but your reaction is you're going to feel agitated. Like, how could they or are you nervous or scared? And, and your reactions will be like that. So in the case of a car cutting me off, um, you know, the car cut me off. Uh, I felt anxious, like, oh, my God, I almost died. How could they? Those dummies, they need to slow it down. Right? And this, I'm now I'm agitated. So, all right, let's check the next one, the theme. Um, trespass. I have been harmed. Okay, so here is another one, unlike danger though, um, where something might happen or you perceive a threat here, you have been harmed. Somebody actually did something to you. Uh, maybe um, you were cheated on by a, in a relationship. Uh, maybe your, your employment didn't pay you on time. Uh, maybe your employer is not paying you fair market value and you feel trespassed, you're harmed by that. Like, man, I bust my butt off and this is how you're going to treat me. They trespassed against how you feel, don't they? Um, 
perhaps a son or a daughter or a parent uh, said something to you and it's like you feel like you're God sent, right? You're the God sent son or, or daughter or you have a, uh, or you're the God sent parent to your son or daughter. Uh, and then they do something to you and it's like, I bust my butt for them. They, this is how they're going to treat me. So that trespass is going to make you feel angry, ain't it? When you respond, you're going to be angry about the situation. You're going to be upset. Um, and then that's going to cause you to, to behave or to react in some sort of aggression, right? Like you're going to get mad, like I do everything for you. And, and now your hands are moving, your heart rate is elevated. I, I, I've done everything for you. I cook, I clean, I blah, blah, blah. I'm faithful to you, right? And you're going to get really animated. You might start throwing stuff. You might start hitting someone. You might even take someone's life, right? It's possible under the, um, the thought theme of being trespassed. When someone can verbally trespass you, right? And, and that's a, a version. I use this in danger, but it can also be a trespass, a verbal trespass as well. Um, they can trespass against you using verbal thoughts. And that might have harmed you. Whereas danger, someone verbally said something, you sense danger. In this case, you actually are harmed. Someone said to you some words that you didn't like. And so again, you get angry, you get aggression. Um, and this is where most feuds happen, right? Under the area of trespass. Um, inflicting harm. Here, I have caused inappropriate or unnecessary or unintentional harm. All right. So say now you are the person doing something to somebody else. Uh, perhaps you failed a test. Um, that someone else paid for, right? Like, oh, your parents paid for your college or something, and then you fell out of class and you inflict harm unnecessarily to that person, right? Um, um, you, you are the one who cut somebody off and you got them mad. you inflicted harm to that other person. Uh, you cheated on a spouse, right? You inflicted harm, you lied, you stole from something, Intentional or unintentional, you did something. Your behaviors are doing something that's inflicting harm. Uh, it's inappropriate. It's unnecessary uh, or unintentional harm. Okay, so any of those realms are inappropriate. Maybe you said something. You said a joke, and it was bad timing. It's inappropriate, right? Um, real inappropriate. It's unnecessary. Like uh, someone says something to you and you, and you say that and, and was something that says, that was not necessary. That's uncalled for. You don't need to say that. Right. Um, and then unintentional, even if you didn't intend to do it, you, you, uh, you still hurt somebody. So when you, when you perceive to have inflicted harm on somebody, you start to feel guilty. Don't you? It's like, yeah. And so you start to feel guilty and you, um, that guilt, tends to create an, an apologetic feel like, man, I'm, I'm really sorry. And, and, uh, and so the, the guilt is overwhelming and a natural reaction to that, a natural reaction is, a, is an apologetic nature, right? Like, I'm so sorry. I can see that you're hurt. You can see it in, in your apologizing. So that's inflicting harm on someone. That's a thought theme. Negative comparison. I don't measure up to others or standards. So, excuse me. So negative comparison uh, would be, um, I don't know, you're in the business, you're trying to lose weight uh, and you're just, oh, here's a good one. I'm sorry. There, I'll use weight in a little bit, but here's a better one, right? Because I happen to be going through this. Um, so you, you, you're you a certain age, right? Uh, you, I may or may not be near approaching my 40s. <laughs> but uh, so you're of a certain age. And you're looking at people's lives and some people's lives are like, wow. And then uh, you're just looking at that life like, man, what, what am I doing wrong, right? You're, you're negatively comparing yourself to somebody else. Or you're at work and there's a stellar performer at work um, and they just do everything right. They seem to get out, every, everybody likes them. And then, uh, you know, you feel like you don't measure up to those standards as well. Uh, so a negative comparison is you're just comparing yourself to someone or something, some standard, um, and that's what you're doing. That's the thought that you think that you don't, you don't match up to that standard. That's how you see yourself. 
And then you can tend your natural emotion is you're going to get embarrassed, right? Like uh, I know when I first joined the army on active duty, I was a reservist for 10 years and uh, it wasn't too hard on the reserves. I, I mean, standards, the expectations were still there, but, uh, but we just, it was one week in a month, you know? So um, yeah, it was just a different environment. Uh, don't get me wrong. I don't want to say uh, that I loved the reserves, but when I came on active duty, it was just a culture shock for me. We worked out every single day, you know, and everybody uh, was just, they had a different level of standards, at least for the unit that I was in. Um, and so when I started going active duty, I felt embarrassed because I couldn't, I was comparing myself to everybody else. Like, man, I can't keep up with them. I was huffing and puffing on my runs. And so I was embarrassed. And then I'd want to hide if someone would invite me to go places that were fitness related. I'd, I'd kind of like do this number, like, no, nah, I'm busy this week. But really, I just didn't want to feel embarrassed. And so I would hide, you know, I would hide. So people who ask me, let's go work out. I, no, no, I'm not, I'm good. I'm all right. So um, yeah, I would just negatively compare myself to others rather than just accept the fact that I wasn't as good as them, but I could still find joy and fun and going with them. Um, I hid behind that and I never did it. Okay. Uh, positive contribution. I have contributed in a positive way. Uh, uh, so this is now we're kind of getting a little bit, uh, um, feeling good thought theme, right? Like, uh, you felt like you've contributed in a good way, uh, and it's a positive way and you've impacted somebody. Um, maybe you gave someone, uh, some food, a homeless person, maybe you've helped mentor somebody, you coach somebody. All right. So these positive contributions that you're giving to life, as you define them, um, you're going to feel a sense of pride, aren't you? You're going to be like, yeah, I did that. I, I did that. And you're going to feel a sense of pride. Uh, and so your reaction may be uh, that you're because you're prideful, you're going to share that. Uh, you're going to use it to start planning future achievements. You're going to say like, oh, I like how this made me feel. So I'm going to use that again to plan some more future achievements in my life. And so these are a, a positive thing that makes you feel prideful. And because you want that adrenaline rushing, or that, I don't know if, uh, I forgot what the science word is, I'm sorry. But there's some chemical reaction that happens inside when it triggers your mind. Uh, um, you want more of it, don't you? And so uh, you start planning for future achievements because you want more of that same feeling. That's a positive contribution thought thing. All right, here's another thought theme here is that you appreciate what you have, what you have received, okay? I have received something that I value. I have been helped by others. So either you received something or you've actually been helped by others. Uh, but something that you value, you're just like, wow, thank you. Um, or somebody helped you along the way. Um, uh, you know, even just the idea that, uh, you know, the universe or God, right? Uh, I like to use God, by the way, but if you're a universe or, or whatever person, you know, you can say that, right? Like uh, you just feel like you're happy that your heart is beating and it does, you don't need to put a battery in there or recharge it, right? It just, it does what it's supposed to do every single day. And you feel a sense of gratitude inside. And because you feel that gratitude, like you don't deserve something, but you got it anyway, your reaction is going to be a lot different, right? You're going to tend to give back more to life. Um, you're going to feel like, man, I don't deserve it, but I got it. So I'm going to pay it forward. So I love, uh, for me and my Christian faith, this is a big thing because we believe that Christ died for us. He died for our sins and we didn't deserve it. While we were still sinners, Christ died on the cross for us and forgave our sins so that we can have an eternal life with him is what the faith believes, Right. So we feel us, this is what we operate off, right? We operate off a sense of gratitude. But because of that emotion, we now feel like oh, we got to do something with this free gift. So we go and we give it back to other people. We pay it forward, right? And so how is your appreciation of things uh, turning it into a gratitude? And then how are you using that gratitude to give back, right? Like um, maybe when you were young, somebody did something to you that changed your life. And now because of that action, now you want to do that to somebody else. So you feel a sense of gratitude and you want to give it back. So 
again, uh, another thought theme. And then a, a final thought theme that we'll be working through here, uh, a positive future, right? A positive future. Uh, and this says, things can change for the better, All right? Things can change for the better. You just have this thought in your mind that, uh, it, it, you know, you, you know that things can change if you really put your mind to it. You just have this mindset in you like, you know what, things are going to change. Things can change. And so that is, if you have that kind of thought, if you're a person who thinks positively about the future, then you tend to have hope, right? You're going to have hope inside. Um, and, and that sense of hope is going to create in you a reaction of energize. You're going to be like, yeah, yeah, I feel good about tomorrow, you know? And uh, I know like during the new year, this tends to bring this about, right? Like in a new year, there's just like, man, this year's going to be good. And the year hasn't even started yet, right? But you just know it's going to be good. It could be day one and you're just declaring it from day one. This is going to be my year. And so you believe that things are going to change for the better. So you have a hope and that hope is pulling you to the future or, or throwing you in the future, right? It's energizing you every time you think about it. And it's causing you to take, a, uh, take action on that, isn't it? Um, let me make sure I didn't miss anything. Give me a second while I look at my notes real quick. Okay, um, so now that I've uh, defined these for you, hopefully you had a time to write these down. And what I want you to take away too is that, um, so this chart doesn't suggest that these connections are always hold true. And we're gonna find that out in another lesson way down the road, okay? Just because these thoughts don't always, uh, oh, let me rephrase that. These thoughts do not always hold true, but for the majority of the time they do, okay? So if you experience a loss, are you gonna be sad? Yeah. If you feel like you're in danger, are you gonna feel anxious? Yeah. You feel like you've been trespassed, are you gonna be angry? Yeah. So these are kind of common themes, right? That generally speaking, if you feel like, uh, if you feel a thought coming up and that thought theme falls in that category of a lost danger, blah, 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 you're likely gonna feel an emotion that says on this chart, and you're likely going to react in a way that is said on this chart. Okay, so that's what the remainder of this class is going to be set on. We're going to be really peeling the onion on this thought process a little bit more and how it correlates to our consequences. And our goal is to separate that. Our goal is to separate the A, the activating event, from the T, the thought, from the, the C, the consequences. OK, where our goal is to separate those so that we can take a look at like, hey, what's going on in this thought? What's going on in this uh, consequence? Like our goal is to like really pull it apart and understand what is going on in here. Uh, um, but just understand that th there are common patterns in these. All right, so let, let's uh, give an example here of, uh, let me make sure I didn't pass it up here. So we're going to give our first example of what this looks like, okay? So say a soldier's, uh, they're on their first deployment, okay? So let's, let's think of some thoughts that might be coming into their mind, by the way. Um, all right. Yeah, okay. So a soldier's on their first deployment, and here's a thought. And I'm not going to be able to spend time with my family. I'm going to miss them. If they said a comment like that, what is the thought theme here? And yeah, I know we made it a little easy for you, right? Because we put it in there. But I'm not going to be able to spend time with my family. I sure will miss them. They feel like they're losing out on something, right? That they have a loss. And moving back, what is the loss? It creates a sadness or withdrawal. So let's see. They start feeling down, right? Sadness. And the reaction, they spend a lot of time alone in their room, withdraw. You see how that works? Uh, okay, using the same example of a, a soldier goes on a first deployment. And by the way, this is exactly how it went down for me. So um, it, it's just interesting to see this uh, example here. But danger, it doesn't every soldier may, might, might think. 
danger, right? Uh, hey, I'm going to die. That falls under the thought theme of danger. Let's look back. So according to this, the danger thought theme is going to lead to anxiety and agitation. Let's see if that's true. So yeah, they feel scared, right? As fear is a part of anxiety. And they start pacing the room now more than ever. They start fidgeting maybe. Uh, they start getting a little scared. Um, they start you know, pacing the room. And so this is danger. Okay, again, first deployment. They didn't train me enough for this. I shouldn't have to go yet. Oh, okay. So according to this, they've been harmed. A trespass is where you have been harmed, okay? And you start feeling anger and aggression. So according to this, he's saying, God, they didn't even train me enough. I shouldn't have to go to this yet, right? You feel like you've been harmed. Um, uh, and so you feel like they're trespassing on your, um, I don't know, your, your comfort, your idea that you qualify to go in the first place. So what do you feel? Okay, well, according to trespass, you're going to start getting angry and aggression. Well, here it is. You feel ticked off, right? And you throw your cell phone. The minute you found out you're getting deployed, you hang up. I shouldn't have to go. I'm not even ready yet. Bam, you throw it against the wall, right? Okay, what about another one? Inflicting harm. Let's go back to our chart. Court, inflicting harm. I have caused inappropriate, unnecessary, or unintentional harm. So now you did something. And what do you feel guilty or apologizing? Here it is. I'm leaving all my family alone. Um, I will miss my son's graduation and other events in his life. So you feel a sense that you're going to or, or that you're going to inflict harm. Right. Um, and so you start feeling guilty about the situation. Like, man, I feel I feel bad. Uh, and then you're just your reactions are you're just apologetic to your son right, or, or your child. Uh, or your spouse, you're feeling a sense of guilt because you feel like you leaving is going to inflict harm on them. Okay, let's go to the next one. A negative comparison. I'm not going to do as well as other soldiers. They're all more prepared. Okay, a negative comparison. The old chart says, I don't measure up to others or standards. And you start feeling embarrassing and you're hiding. So there's a negative comparison. You're embarrassed. And you don't interact with much other of the members of your team because you feel like they see you a certain way and you see yourself a certain way and you just you all don't belong together. All right. Uh, looking at the uh, chart for um, positive contribution, I have contributed in a positive way. And that leads to you having pride and you start sharing, planning future achievements. So let's see what he says here. Uh, positive contribution. I will be there for my battle buddies, in case you're not a military member. Um, I know the army uses this a lot. We call each other battle buddies. Um, just means that your buddies in battle, right? You're, it, it's just what we call it. It's like BFF, but battle buddy, BB, right? Okay, so I will be there for my battle buddies. You, you feel like you have a contribution to make. You think of yourself a certain way and you say you have value to add to your team. And you're proud about that, right? And you discuss with the chain of command where to start to get ready to go. You see how you're thinking because you change the way you think about this deployment and you start realizing, hey, everybody's going to feel the same way. So how about I make a positive contribution to the team and I start letting people know I'm going to be there for them. That's something you said inside in your mind. And so your emotions, you're going to start feeling proud. I mean, uh, excuse me, let me get some water. At your emotion, you're going to start feeling proud about this situation. You're going to even go as so far as to discuss it with your chain of command, where to start to go to get ready to go. You're going to seek leadership opportunities. You're going to look for people who probably are feeling lost, danger, trespass, uh, negative comparison, inflicting harm. You're going to look for those people and you're going to be the one who contributes to them, right? You could do that. It, it's in your it's in your skill set to do it. All right, uh, appreciating what you have received. Let's look at the chart first. I have received something that I value. I have been helped by others. When you do this, you start feeling gratitude, giving back and paying forward. So let's see what this person does on their first deployment. And they choose to accept the thought that I have received the best training to prepare for deployment. Now you start seeing it in a different way. Um, you could have just as easily said, uh, you know, my mentor poured into me or, or, I know for me, I didn't necessarily feel I was ready right, for deployment, but what I said was, 
I have come from a lineage of well-trained soldiers, you know, uh, since the beginning of the, of the army, right? The United States Army. And I felt a gratitude that I was even able to be on this platform with them, that we're still here. And so I felt thankful, right? I felt thankful. And then uh, helping other soldiers to get ready for deployment, I felt like that was my calling, like I needed to pass that forward. Um, but here in this case, uh, this person is saying, I, they received the best training. They're thankful that they did. And now they want to help other soldiers to get ready for the deployment. Those other ones that might feel like they're not ready, right? All right. And then the last one, positive future, we go back to our chart and says things can change for the better. All right. So they're real positive. They think that anything can change if they put their mind to it. Um, if I have a plan, I know I can, right? If I believe it, I can achieve it. If it's to be, it's up to me, right? These are some of the things they might say. I do these with my kids all the time. Um, but uh, okay, so this creates a sense of hope inside. Like, I don't know what's coming my way, but I, I know things will get good because I, I'm, and I'm a part of that plan, right? So you start getting energized and you take action. So let's see what our soldier said here. When I get home, I will reconnect with my family and I will enjoy making up for the lost time. So they know that, hey, you know what? They're not denying the bad things, as we said, positive and negative, right? That it's the negative is still there. It's just that you're choosing to focus on the positive. And that's what this person is doing. When I get home, they didn't say if they get home. They didn't, you know, like, yeah, is there a possibility they might not come home? Sure, the danger is there, right? I'm going to die is what it says up there. It's there, but they're choosing to only control what they can control. They don't know if they'll live or die. They don't know that. So if you don't know, why not choose the feeling that's going to get you through the, the, this thing, right, that we're all going through? When I get home, I will connect with my family and will enjoy making up for the lost time. Now this person is starting to feel hopeful. And then they start uh, training to do the best to their ability. And I like that they said that, training to do the best of their ability. Um, so, Okay. This is uh, an example of how you can use this thought theme to do that. Remember, our goal is to peel apart the onion here uh, of thoughts and consequences and how those connect with each other. So some people find that there's a pattern in the thoughts that they relate to, um, to, to a certain theme, okay? And there's a pattern here that if you, if you keep thinking negatively, then negative is going to keep going and going. So if we look at these patterns here, right, loss, danger, if you're always a danger person, uh, if you're always like, oh, someone did you wrong, uh, you always feel like you're going to lose something, right? Um, if you, if you, if those are the lenses that you're putting on. And these, let's just make them like lenses. If those are the lenses you're putting on, then in those lenses is what you'll see. So if you feel like you're being trespassed, like someone is always doing something to you, you're always gonna feel angry and you're gonna show signs of regression, uh, aggression, <laughs> right? Uh, if you feel like you're always losing something, like man, something's always being taken away from me, you're always gonna feel sad and withdraw. This is just the science, okay? This is just science. It's going to make you feel, these are the thought themes and emotions. Uh, and so, Noticing patterns in your thoughts can help you understand why you react the way you do in a variety of events, okay? So how might wearing glasses undercut your resilience? Remember, our goal is to become more resilient. So how might wearing the glasses of loss, the glasses of, uh, let's, let's go again, danger, the glasses of trespass or the glasses of inflicting harm, or vice versa, a right? uh, positive future, the glasses of positive contribution or glasses of appreciation. How might wearing those glasses uh, prevent us from seeing um, or, or, or undercut our resilience? All right, and the answer is it prevents us from seeing the situation properly, right? If you're always wearing those same thought themes, the same glasses, then you're not going to be able to see the other opportunities that are available to you, which look at all the thought themes you have to choose from, right? I, I mentioned the, the car that cut me off, right? Um, the car that cut me off, hey, they, they put me in danger. So I felt danger and I got anxious and I showed agitation. I stuck the thing at them, you ain't right? But 
I have also been in a situation where I've been in a rush and I needed to get to school and to work on time so I can not get fired, blah, 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 right? And so because I've been in that situation, um, I decided to contribute in a positive way. So positive contribution for me was, you know what? I, I, I am going to, uh, to pray for them. I, I, I am glad that I can contribute by slowing down so that they can move up, get the spot ahead of me. I don't try to like beat them to it to where I'm playing this game of not letting them in or not letting them out of the, of the you know, the highway. <laughs> you know, why? Why? Just let them go about their business, right? They're in a rush. They're probably in a rush for a reason. And yeah, it might be their fault, but so be it. Who cares, right? Just let them go. And so how might having a certain set of glasses um, impact you, all right? Your neighbors, the way you see your neighbors, uh, perhaps the way you deal with finances, you know, do you always feel the same way about your finances? Do you always feel the same way about politics? You know, uh, uh, are you a, a diehard Republican, diehard Democrat? Are you, uh, you know, you're always putting on the same lens and then you can't see the other. How about religion? Do you see people the same way? I remember when 9-11 happened um, and we found out, uh, you know, that, um, you know, who was responsible for it and we started attacking and then all of a sudden, this became a religious thing, like everyone of that religion was the same. It was the mentality that was circulating in that time of 9-11, you know, where they attacked the towers. And so it was like we had these lenses of this is how we perceive this religion to be, or a certain religion, uh, they're a threat, right? They're a danger. And so we were just always wearing those glasses, weren't we? Um, and so... Yeah, th these are just ways that these thoughts consequences connect with one another. Remember, the thoughts are the glasses and what you're choosing to see from them is gonna cause you to have a consequence because you see it that way, right? Uh, and so just some food for thought there as we continue to peel back this onion of uh, thoughts and consequences. Okay. We're almost near the end of this, and so very close to it. I hope you're doing okay. Uh, so let's continue on. So here's a quick diagram to show us a little bit more to peel back this onion. So the activating event, the thought, and the consequence, the ATC, is a very complex thing to talk about. It takes a long time for people to really, really understand this. And if this is your first time hearing this, um, please, play the video a few more times, read about this material, but uh, your thoughts impact your consequence, right? What you think of about the activating event, what you think about the activating event is how you're going to have a consequence that favors you or doesn't favor you, right? Um, and so let's talk about this activating event here. You get into a fight with someone you care about and you think to yourself, She's always getting on my case, okay? She's always getting on my case, all right? Well, first off, which thought theme is this? She's always getting on my case. Would you say this is a loss? I have lost something I value or care about. Would you say this is danger? Something bad might happen or there's a threat? Or would you say a trespass? I have been harmed, slighted, or someone crossed the line. I'm going to say this is a trespass, right? I think that I'm thinking you're thinking that. Uh, it's definitely not you inflicting harm. It's not you negatively comparing yourself, right? So and then it gets more positive. So we're going to stick with trespass. They trespassed you. So how is that trespass going to impact you? Uh, okay, so let's uh, think of some examples of how this would, would happen Tell me what emotions you're going to naturally feel if you think that she always gets on your case, that you feel trespassed, she's always getting on your case. Well, according to our thought danger, uh, when we pull out the, the, the well, I don't know if you can see it, I got it here, but um, according to the trespass, the natural emotion is anger. So you're gonna feel angry towards this person, aren't you? You're gonna feel angry about this person and then you're gonna start to, your reaction is show aggression to them. So you got anger here and you got aggression here. Now here's where it gets complex because the more you allow these consequences to become your reality, remember they came from your thoughts. 
you thought that you were trespassed because you uh, because you got in a fight with someone you allowed the activating event the first thought to be or or the 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 the, the influential thought to be that um that they trespassed you so you say she's always getting on my case that's a trespass ain't it all right so because you felt that way you're angry and you're going to show a little aggression and you might say screw you Therefore, here you go, this arrow, screw you. Are you going to keep fighting with that someone because you said screw you? Yeah, right. You're probably going to continue to fight with that person until your emotion and or your reaction changes. If it doesn't change, you will continue fight. And therefore, you're going to say she's always getting on my case. Because you really buy into that, these emotions and, and uh, responses continue to elevate, escalate, and you keep feeling the same way, and you're going to continue fighting with them, and then you're going to keep saying she's always getting on your case because they just proved it the last time and the time before that. So something, okay, before I go there, or, and or, the more that you feel stronger about your emotion and your reaction, is the more that you continue feeling that she's always getting on your case and you're just going to be like, there's no sense of fixing it. So this loop happens between all these right here, this nonstop, uh, this nonstop loop, right? She's always getting on my case. We always fight. She's always getting on my case. You feel a certain way. You react a certain way. That certain way is what's fueling that thing. That thing is, and you can say, well, they can stop, but can't you too, right? So this is kind of like the ATC. That's why it's so complex because any one of these things can fuel you. Now, uh, it doesn't always have to be the activating event. It can just be the idea that she's always getting on your case. And because she's always getting on your case, you're not going to bring stuff to her or him because she's always getting on your case, right? And it's just going to lead to a fight. And because you don't want to fight, you choose not to bring it up. Because if you bring it up, she's always going to get on your case and then you're going to feel a certain way and then it keeps going to loop and loop. So I think you get this, right? In order for things to change, you must change. I, I can't remember who says that. It's not me, my quote, but uh, I hear it a lot. But, uh, but I think it's Einstein that does say that um, if you keep doing the same thing over and expecting the same result, it's insanity, right? And so if, if you want things to change, something's got to happen here. Can you change the activating event that someone is going to choose to fight with you? No, right? You, you can't change that. If they're going to fight with you, that's what they're going to do. But what can you change in this process? You can change your thought about it, right? Like if I'm, if I'm uh, as a practitioner of ATC, this is how I would do this skill. Let me roll up my sleeves here, right? So I would say, okay, someone comes and they start an argument with me, right? Maybe they've had a lot of arguments in the past. And I used to believe that, that oh, this person's always arguing with me or always getting on my case about this. Well, okay. So in this time, I'm going to say, I, I want to do better. So someone fights with me rather than take the theme of trespass. Maybe I'll look on my little handy dandy chart here. And I'm going to say, um, I'm going to feel a sense of appreciation for what I have, uh, uh, what you have received. So what I have received, right? So I'm going to say, you know what, they're fighting with me, but man, I'm just glad I have a, a spouse to be able to have conversation with, right? And what does that lead to? That sense of appreciation leads to gratitude and giving back and paying it forward. So now, because I've changed my thought process about how, what they're doing to me, and how I'm going to perceive it, I might say, I'm sorry, you know, at first figure out what you're fighting about, right? Maybe it's, uh, uh, I don't know, I didn't pick up my clothes and now they're on my case about it, right? Uh, and I didn't put it in the very clothes. So now I might think about like, well, I want to give back to this person because I really appreciate how they, how they've always been there for me when I was sick or when I was hurting or, when, you know, just how they love me. Now I've created a sense of gratitude and what does gratitude do? It wants to give back. So when I see that they're offended by an action that I did, 
rather than saying, oh, she's always on my case, I could say, a sense, through a sense of lens of gratitude, I could say, um, I'm sorry that upset you, you know, or, or I'm sorry, uh, you know, how can I fix it? I want to give back, right? So my emotion is gratitude. Like, uh, I really value you. I appreciate you. And my response is, um, how can I give back? So that next time we fight with each other, I'm not thinking she's always on my case, but I'm thinking, well, she's angry about something. What is it that I can do to impact it or change it, right? So that's how you break the loop. You just change your thought. You change the way you think about it. The loss, the danger, the trespass, these are things that are happening to you, right? The negative comparison, it's all about you. But these last three, the positive contribution, the appreciation for what you receive, the positive future, right? Even if I went with the theme of the positive future, if she if some fights with me about something uh, that I care about, someone you care about, oh, fight with someone you care about. I, so my, yeah, my spouse gets in a fight with me. If I go into this thing, like, you know what? This is gonna end well for us. We have a great marriage. If I go into that, I have hope and I'm not thinking, oh, we're gonna get divorced. We're not meant to be, blah, blah, blah. We always kind of say that. Right? I'm meant to be. <laughs> I like the saying, if it's to be, it's up to me, right? And so if, if I want something to be, I got to make it about being, right? It's not like uh, if I'm, it, it, you know, um, I know people who fall in love, they, they tend to, well, never mind, let me not get there because now I'm getting too personal here. But I just think that love is something that you do it's an action, right? It's a verb. It's something that you have to do. It doesn't just appear by itself. You have to purposely love. Um, and if you say to your, this is what I was going to say, by the way, if you were to say, you know, we fell out of love, but then if I were to ask you, well, do you want to love them? And if your answer is yes, then love them, right? Now you're no longer fall out of love. You you fell back in love because you just chose to love them. I mean, that's what love is, right? You're just giving an, an emotion, a thought. And if you want to be angry, then, then be angry. But whatever it is, those are your consequences. And that's what ATC is about, isn't it? It's about learning to understand that you control your consequences when it comes to how you choose to let it affect you emotionally and how do you react to it. Okay. So what's the goal of ATC? Well, as I said earlier, it's to separate the activating event, to separate our thoughts, separate the, uh, the activating event from our thoughts about it, and then the consequences. We want to separate the A from the T to the C. Separate all those things and let them be isolations of themselves. Something happens to you. I like to use this one. It's really, really crazy example, but Someone slaps me on the face, activating event. My thought, trespass, right? How dare you, you touch me, you hurt me, or, or it could be danger, but yeah, trespass, right? But if I took at it as another approach, I could say, what, what if they responded with, I'm so sorry, there was a spider on your face. And oh, I hate spiders. Anyone who knows me knows spiders. I would totally be okay with them slapping that spider off my face. But I wouldn't have known that if I had let my, my thoughts attack them first and, and lead to a consequence that attacks them first. So that's what we're talking about here, right? Like just because there's an activating event doesn't mean you have to keep responding the same way. You have been slapped probably by your mom or your dad or somebody, right? And that's probably why you got so mad because anyone that touches your face at that velocity of a hand movement you just automatically think, oh no, this can't be good. But have you ever had someone smack your face because there was a spider or a bug about to get you or a snake or something was about to get you and they smacked it and yeah, they may have accidentally hit your face in the process, but, but they were doing it out of a kind gesture. Have you ever had that done with you? And if you haven't, is it possible that that could happen? Is it possible that when you're driving down the road Someone cuts you off, not because they're being selfish and just they're late, but is it possible that they have a child in the back of the seat who's very, very ill and they're trying to get to the hospital as fast as they can and they're weaving 
and you honking at them or you getting in their way trying to block them because you're angry and you're trying to prove a point um is it possible that they're just trying to take care of a kid and you can say well it's not like me well, i i know i get that but remember we talked about the negative and the positivism right like you thinking negatively like that, is that going to set you up for a successful day, a, a feel-good day, a positive day, a productive day? It's not, right? So just let it be. Since you don't know the answer, then let it be, right? Let it be. So I like to say, uh, well, I don't like to say this is a quote here, um, but uh, to identify patterns in our thinking to make us weaker, make us weaker or decrease performance. Um, excuse me that make us weaker, not to make us weaker, sorry. <clears throat> so what's making you weaker? What's decreasing your performance? What's taking away from the real outcome? Do you really wanna fight with your spouse? Do you really wanna get a divorce? Do you really wanna say we fell out of love? <laughs> Even though I don't like that saying. Um, I mean, you really wanna go down that road, right? No, you probably don't. I don't think the average person gets married just to say, let's get divorced in the next day or something. No, right? So these, this ATC right here is it, all right? This is it. Uh, this is what is in, within your control. This is a skill that you can use for you. Okay, so Aristotle says anyone can get angry. That is easy, but to get angry with the right person to the right extent at the right time for the right reason and in the right way is no longer something easy that anyone can do. We're gonna take a, 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 a just a smaller, deeper dive as we close out and get ready to do our final exercise for ATC. Now remember this skill builds on, so um, we're just gonna kind of take a look at this. Uh, and this is a classic one. And if you're a mother to a daughter, or if you were uh, a, a daughter or son to this parent, see, see through all these lenses, right? You as the parent, you as the child, um, but see how this could be um a reality okay all right so let's take a look at father and son this is the father and son practice i hope this plays right but um if it doesn't uh you can find this on youtube just google atc father son okay but here we go hey kiddo let's go outside and shoot some hoops Hey, come on. It's a beautiful day outside. I've been gone for a year. We can work on that jump shot, you know? So let me get through this half. Come on. Been gone for a year. Let's spend some time together. Try to use this new tactic my uncle showed me. All right. Go ahead. Okay, I'm going to push pause right here real quick. So what I didn't mention is that uh, in that video, uh, this is a father who's come home from a deployment, and now he's just wanting to, uh, you know, as father, I know I did, I was like, man, I got to make up all that time. In fact, that was one of our uh, responses in the thought themes, right? Thinking positively, like, hey, when I get back, I'll make up all that time. But now the father's back, and they want to make up that time. They're like, hey, let's go shoot hoops, and the son is distracted by the game. I'm sure no parents have ever felt that way before, right? <laughs> or you've ever done that to your parents by being on your phones or something, right? Okay, so, um, you know, they, it feels distracted. So what is the thought theme here that you would assume they feel? Just contemplate that. Look at your paper. Look at your, your themes here because this is practice. What do you think they're feeling? Uh, well, what is the thought theme, the natural thought theme? What is the emotion that they're feeling to that thought theme? And what is a reaction you might anticipate happening? Let's take a look at the second half. Hey, Dad, you want to play outside? Uh, uh, not right now. You know, I'm trying to watch the fight here. I mean, come on. But it's going to get dark. Hey, soon. well, you know, just, just scram. You know, I'm trying to watch the fight here. But this morning you said you hey, wanted to play. Hey, you know what? Why don't you just go play with some of your other friends? Or better yet, how about your uncle? You know, because he seemed to got all kinds of pointers and time to play with you. So why don't you go play with him? But Dad, hey, what did I say? Get out of here.
<laughs> the music, right? Doesn't the music just get you? Ah, <laughs> oh, okay. Well, okay. So let's take this down a little bit. And if you go to page 38 here, um, let me grab my 38. Where is it at? Okay, here it is. Okay, so if you go to page 38, this is where we're going to look at a practice run of what you're going to be doing when we when we when we're done with this training here. Um, then you're gonna have some homework to do, okay? But this is what it's gonna look like. We're, you're going to eventually think of a an activating event, a who, what, when, where, and you're gonna break that activating event down. Think about your thoughts, your heat of the moment thoughts, and your thought theme. And then you're going to write down your consequences, those emotions and the reactions that you felt towards the activating event. And then you're going to ask yourself, um, are those emotions helping or harming you? Okay. So let's take a look at this video that I mean, we already saw the video, but let's see how this video played out. So the dad, uh, I asked my son to play basketball after returning from deployment and he said no. I remember deployments a whole year. And you're already feeling all these thought emotions, right? Like you've sacrificed, uh, you miss your family and you just come back home and you just like want life to be normal again, but it hardly is, right? Notice in the video, the son got really close to the uncle and maybe the uncle was just trying to take care of the brother, right? Like, hey, my brother's gonna be gone. Let me step up and help my nephew out. All right, so um, this was the case for me too. You know, with my family, my friends and my fam my brother and sister, they stepped up to the plate with my kids when I was gone. And I was thankful while I was gone. And then I came back and I just want to feel the role again as a parent. But now they've had all these parents, right? <laughs> and so I'm not their, their main one anymore, am I? And so it's, it's very hard emotional time. Okay, so the dad wanting to play basketball. I, said, I want to play uh, um, my son play basketball returning from deployment, but he said, no, that's the activating event. So let's see what kind of thoughts came into his head. His heat of the moment thought was my son doesn't want to be with me. That was a heat of the moment thought. He wrote it raw. He wrote it pure. My son doesn't want to be with me. Is that true? I don't know. Right? We don't know. The son may want to be, but at the time he was playing a game, he was just excited about the game. Most kids don't even know how they're doing their behavior affects other people. They just don't know that stuff at that age, right? But in this case, the father who has a more mature mindset says, my son doesn't want to be with me. So what's the consequence of that? The dad feels bummed out. He's sad. Hasn't spent, seen him in a year. He shakes his head. He leaves the room. And what does he do? He starts drinking. That's the reaction that he gives. All right. Is there any others? Oh, and so the thought theme here was uh, he felt like he he's he's lost something, right? And the, the remember the thought theme for loss is uh, sadness and withdrawal. So yeah, sadness. He's bummed out, and then the withdrawal. He leaves the room, shakes his head, and then what does he do? He starts drinking because. He just feels like he lost something and it makes him sad. And we all know that alcoholism or, or drinking withdraws you from reality, doesn't it? So, uh, so it's drugs, it gives you a withdrawal from reality. You feel lost. See something else. Uh, then another thought that he thought of was he's an ungrateful brat. So not only does he feel like he lost something, but as he, his thoughts progress, He's thinking, you ungrateful brat. I did went to deploy it. I served my country. I did all these things for you. Um, you know, I'm here. I'm the one who's giving you that, that Xbox that you're playing on and that TV you're watching and I feed you and I clothe you. You ungrateful brat. This is the thought that he lets unfiltered into his mind, the heat of the moment thought. So what's the emotion? He's ticked off and that's the emotion. He's ticked off. He's mad, right? Uh, so... And then he yells at his son. So based on the emotion, he's ticked off. And then he responds with aggression. Right? His emotion is he's ticked off, anger, and he responds with an aggression, yells at son. What is the thought theme here? Yeah, he feels trespassed, right? Basically, if you're using your chart, he feels trespassed. Okay, so are my emotions and reactions helping or harming? This is what he says. My emotions and reactions are harming me in this situation. I'm not effectively dealing with my anger or sadness by yelling at my son. True. 
and leaving the room. True. He's not dealing with them. He's just saying, eh, whatever. And my emotion and reactions are getting in my way of having time with my son, which is exactly what I want. So he wants time with his son. But because he just yelled at him, do you think his son's going to want to be with him? No, right? Uh, and so it, unless he finds a way to deal with this, he's not going to be able to ultimately get what he wants to be with his son. It's causing loss and it's causing a trespass as severely impacting his ability to get what he wants. All right, so key principles here, separate the A from the T from the C, okay? Remember A, just the facts. Who, what, when, where is what you're gonna be doing. You, only the who, what, when, where. No feeling, no nothing. The, who, the activating event is either a who, it's a what, it's a when, or it's a where, or it's a little bit of combination of either of those, okay? It could be all, it could be some, okay, but, Remember, an activating event is just the event. Pull yourself, your thoughts away from it. Now, the thought is your interpretation of that event. What do you say yourself in the heat of the moment? What are you saying to yourself? Like, ah, okay. And then what are the consequences that are happening? Whether it's an emotional or a reaction or, or both, right? What consequences are you observing happening because of your heat of the moment thought? Your goal is to detach, the, detect the patterns and identify any patterns in your T's, your thoughts, identify any patterns in your T's, your thought things that undercut your performance or mental toughness. You want to perform in a certain way, right? You don't want to get angry. You don't want to be, be mad and feuding with your spouse. You don't want none of that. So your goal is to detect some of that stuff. All right. And then Overall, you're, this is going to increase your self-awareness, okay? It's because um, our primary target uh, of ATC is self-awareness. Just to allow you to be going on, like be aware that you can control your thoughts. It takes practice though. I know a habit, when you develop a habit and you start feeling a certain way, it takes practice. But let me show you this. Like when you watch a movie for the, certain, for the first time and there's a scene that just gets at you, right? The more and more you watch it, if you were to watch that scene a hundred times, maybe the first 50 times you cry on that scene because it's just so emotional. But at the next 50, you might be able to control it a little better because you already know it's coming, right? I say 50 because there are some movies that are really hard to not cry on for me. But, you know, I can watch it again and be like, oh, I already know it's coming because I already know it's coming. I can make my mind think, you already know what's going to happen. I can interject thoughts on purpose to make myself not cry. I'm like, oh, bro, this is stupid. He's going to go for the girl and the girl's going to blah, 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 right? <laughs> so it's funny how we can do that, right? Um, so you can do this with this too. You can see, man, I always act this way in front of my spouse or in front of my child. And you can do things to change those patterns. So here's what we're going to do. And this is the final, uh, this is the last part. Um, we are going to, well, we did the practical exercise demonstration, all right? Uh, we had two ATC recent activating events in practice one and practice two. You remember that? Um, oh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm going to give you two recent activating events uh, in practice one and practice two. You're going to create um, two of those events, uh, which is on page uh, 39. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, page 40 and 41. Okay, so page 40 and 41, you're going to do your own uh, practice events, uh, two of them. And what I want you to do is if you're having trouble thinking of some events, then go ahead and look back on page 34 and 35. Remember you were writing out some scenarios that you've had trouble with in the past. You can use those and just transfer them to this exercise and start working on those. Um, you can also refer to page 36. Page 36 had you, uh, I didn't talk about this earlier, but now I am. Because um, you're going to need to fill out page 36 for future exercises. So what I want you to do is answer those questions on page 36. And then uh, that way you'll have some scenarios to play around with for future exercises uh, in the future. Okay. But in any regard, the practice here is to fill out ATC practice one and ATC practice two in page 40 and 41. And here's what it looks like in case you don't have a, in case you don't have a, the, the paper, you can just write this down on, on your own paper here. 
All right. You're going to describe an event and the who, what, when, where. You're going to put your thoughts, the heat of the moment thought you thought of, the emotion, the reaction, and then tell me by looking at your chart, you can cheat, right? Uh, what was the thought theme? And if you had another moment, a heat of the moment thought that came, because there can be more than just one heat of the moment thought. Like you might think a bunch of things at the same time, just like the dad did. Um, he thought that his son was ungrateful, but he also felt sad, right? So there was a loss and there was a trespass. Um, and then ask yourself the big question. Ask yourself, are my emotions and reactions helping me or harming me um, to effectively deal with the situation? Okay, I know that's not written in there, but that's how you should see it. So now let me practice, um, you know, one that I did. And this is a personal one that I did <laughs> recently, actually. Hmm. So my spouse got into a bad argument after I brought up a financial concern on spending too much money last month. Now, it was Christmas. Uh, okay, so it's not all her fault. It, it, I don't want you to focus on the money part or anything. What I want you to focus on is how I handled it. And then I'll, I'll be truthful and transparent on the, on the thing, okay? So my heat of the moment was, man, how dare she try to get me get all mad when I'm just trying to get our family out of debt, right? So, you know, we, we've made goals. Every year we make a goal and a, a, our reoccurring goal of ours is to clear out some old debts that have been lingering. And so I feel trespassed, right? Because um, I feel like I'm the only one that's holding on to this goal. And I feel trespassed. And it pisses me off that she would get mad. And so, yeah, I got extremely angry, right? My emotion, how did I feel? I got extremely angry. In my reaction, what did I do? What were the physiological reactions? Well, my voice got louder, um, my heart rate increased. I used foul language with rude hand gestures and so I started yelling back and on and on the argument went and went and went. Well, you do this and it's, it becomes a matter of who's gonna beat who, like who's better, right? Here's something else I thought of. I'm like, oh my God, why does she always do this whenever we talk about money, right? Why can't she just listen and help solve a problem rather than argue, okay? Um, you know, this was a frustration of mine. Like I, I, I feel like uh, we, we both agreed that I would kind of manage the money and I haven't done a good job on keeping her in the loop, by the way. So I don't want to paint her out as, as the, bad, the person responsible. It's both our fault. Okay. But in this particular argument, I'm just trying to be as transparent so I can give you good value for this training. Uh, I felt like there was a loss there, right? Like, um, like I was missing out. Um, like I was losing something, whether it was my relationship or our ability to really achieve a goal that we both want. Um, I felt like we were losing that focus, you know, because I felt like it wasn't even about the money or the finance. I just felt like there was something there deeper that we're just trying to one up each other. And so my heat of the moment thought was like I was saddened, right? It made me sad. So I feel sad and I feel like I just want to give up trying to talk with her. That's my emotion. Right? I'm sad. And, and my response actually is I just want to give up talking to her. So I storm out of the room. I shut myself off and ignore her. And I think even that day I had a beer or two um, just because I was like, eh, whatever, you know, and I think I went to go watch Netflix and just shut the world off. So, okay, that's as, as raw and as truthful as it gets for you. I hope that you can appreciate that. Uh, maybe it hits home for you. Maybe you argue about money or something else. Um, and so maybe these are your thought themes as well, right? But um, so describe how your emotions and reactions are helping or harming uh, me to effectively deal with the situation. And I would say they're harming, all right? Definitely harming me. I mean, what do I ultimately want? Well, I, I want us to have a good marriage. I want us to get out of debt. I want us to, you know, um, be happy and be get along. I don't want a divorce, right? And I know that long time, I, I, something in the back of my mind reminds me that the statistically, the reason, number one reason for divorces is finances. So there's this fear factor in there as well, telling me like, well, something could happen, you know, like if you don't get this fixed up, this debt could become bigger and bigger. And it's not crazy now, but it could be, right? And so if we don't get some discipline involved, it couldn't become bigger. So they're harming me. I say, I value my marriage and I love her and I want our marriage to work, though my feelings are true. I know that if I continue to allow my emotions and responses to go unchecked, it will hurt us. 
So it's like, um, damn, if I do or don't, right? So if I, if, I, if I use the loss theme and just walk out and ignore it and don't address it, the, 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 the financial problem still exists. But if I keep addressing it in a way that prompts her to fight with me and I feel trespassed, and then now the threat of our marriage is there because of the communication issues. So it's like either the finance or the communication. And so it's like a little bit of a dance, right? And so there you go. I'm probably sure you're wondering, so how do you solve the problem? That's what this whole resiliency training is all about. We're not there yet. And I know you got an appetite to want to get there. But slow it down. Let's just focus on the A, the T, and the C first. And then we have solutions in this program on how I would have addressed this problem later down the road, okay? So that's what your assignment is. Page 40 and 41, you're going to answer the question, answer these questions and pick two examples. Be true and transparent to yourself. Um, and, uh, and let's see where they go, okay? Uh, and, and you can focus on the positive ones, but I really would like for you to focus on the ones that are hurting you. Okay, so think of the ones that are really, really hurting you. Maybe you're just a negative thinker. You, you're always scared of things or, and it's hurting your ability. You're just always reacting in a certain way. So just go ahead and uh, be, be hard on yourself. This is a good time for self-awareness, okay? All right, this here, partner, if you had a partner, then they, if you were in my class, in the real class, we would do a partner check here, but uh, we're going to skip that today. Uh, okay, so then uh, if you were in the classroom with me, I would bring everybody back together and we do a debrief and I would ask for volunteers on what, what did you learn? Uh, what patterns, if any, did you notice about your thoughts or consequences? And then in what ways are you, is your, was your reaction helping or harming you? And so here, it's kind of cool to do this in a class format because what you get is a whole group of 40 people, if not more, realizing that y'all, we're all suffering from this, right? Like we all have a tendency to skip over how the A, the T, and the C all connect with each other um, and how we're not very good at separating them, especially in the heat of the moment, right? So that's what this is all about, just becoming self-aware. When you become self-aware, you can become more resilient and make it becoming more resilient. You can get more of the things you want in life. So um, how can you use ATC to enhance your performance and how can you use ATC to build stronger relationships? Let me just look at my notes just to make sure I didn't put any last minute things here. Uh, but I think that's it. Uh, Okay, so ATC helps people to slow down their thoughts and generate counterproductive emotions and reactions. Okay, so if you were to, the A and the T, once the activating event occurs, and, and if you notice that you're thinking something that's not, that's going to produce a bad consequence, you can create a counterproductive uh, uh, in their thoughts. Gener uh, you can create... Um, excuse me, you can help change the outcome by just slowing down your thoughts and thinking about that and removing those counterproductive things that are, are not helping you to achieve what you want. ATP, ATC can be used for counseling a soldier or family member uh, with the aim of helping that person understand why he or she is feeling or reacting in a particular way. Okay, so I would encourage you, if you're a parent, if you're a friend, if you're a manager or a supervisor or or you just want to deal with people and you see that they're struggling, you can teach them to use ATC to learn to separate the, the three. Make sure they fill out this uh, the thought themes, make them familiar with these thought themes and how they interact uh, and that how it's predictable, right? Like, hey, if you, if you feel like you've been trespassed, well, guess how you're going to feel? You're going you're gonna to feel, based on science, angry and aggression is going to be your actions. It's science, right? Like it's just, um, it, it, they've done research on this and, and it's gonna happen, right? If you feel like you've had a loss, like you're creating a theme that uh, you feel like you lost something, guess what? You're gonna feel sad and you're gonna start withdrawing. 
So, um, okay, I think that's it. Yeah, check on learning here. What is the skill? We learned that ATC is a method to identify your thoughts about an AE, an activating event, and the consequences of those thoughts, okay? Our thoughts are under our control. That's the key takeaway here is that our thoughts are under our control. You can interject the thought that's going to work for you to produce a consequence that will work for you. When do you use it? Anytime you're in a curious about your emotions or reactions. When you don't like your emotions or reactions, the consequence, or when you're stuck in a pattern wearing one set of glasses, like you always think like you're scared, or you always think you're going to lose something, you know, you always feel a certain way, you can utilize ATC for this, okay? And then how do you use it? You describe the AE objectively, meaning it's just the who, what, when, where, not the why, the who, what, when, where. You're describing it objectively. You're identifying your thoughts afterwards, like, okay, how am I likely gonna feel? And then how can I make a pattern that's gonna not make me feel that way? Because you're identifying your consequences. You want a consequence that's gonna work for you. So by changing your thoughts, you can change your outcomes, your consequence. Okay, well, hey team, uh, that is it for ATC. Mother of all lessons here. If you don't get this one, go back and, and review. Uh, there's a lot of videos out there as well as on how thoughts impact uh, emotions, which impacts consequence. Um, so uh, you, you can look it up, all that stuff, right? Um, so your thoughts will, will produce a consequence. Um, and so just what you think of, it, it matters, okay? <laughs> just give mind to that. But um, I appreciate you. Uh, on this next lesson here, we're going to be moving into uh, energy management, okay? Energy management is how, uh, you know, your thoughts, you feel a certain way, but what if you feel like you just can't help it? Like, I can't help it. I just come home so tired. And uh, who wouldn't get mad, you know, when you come home and you see clothes on the floor and you see, uh, you know, the, the same dishes are there in the sink? Who wouldn't get mad, man? I'm tired. So we're going to be playing around with this concept in our next uh, module here, energy management and how managing your energy is super important to make you more resilient so that you can produce greater thoughts in your mind. Okay, well, let me close out the uh, screen share here. And uh, hey, I just want to say I uh, appreciate you. Thanks for following along. If you like it, don't forget to hit the like subscribe button. Um, uh, I have a uh, website, it's called intentionate.com, or you can go to rockyventura.com. It leads you to the same thing. I'm a part of an organization called the John Maxwell Team. So at this date and time, which is the uh, 16th of January, 2022, it, it's going to that page, but eventually I'll have a Intentionate website all by itself. Um, but uh, that's what I do. It's one of the things I did. I joined the John Maxwell Team. And uh, it changed my life. Like I had learned how to become, a, um, learn how to develop my leadership skills. And then even learning this type of stuff. I mean, I felt like I am in this class, the MRT class, because of things that I learned in the John Maxwell team. Um, and it, it excited me and made me want to do more. So if you're on that next level, you think you're ready to, to up your game up a little bit and learn some more skills and be in a community that does it, hey, send me an email and I'll teach you or I'll show you the path to becoming a certified John Maxwell team member uh, where we teach leadership skills, mental, um, you know, uh, mental toughness, uh, you know, resiliency, things like that. We, we teach you those kind of things so that you can teach it to others and make a difference. So, hey, that's all I got. Uh, you take care. God bless you. And we'll see you next time. Later.